Oh, right, all right, all right. Welcome back, nerds. We are here for another StarCraft 2 game between none other than Florencio. That's right, the king of the dank, the Psystorm Gaming's recruit. That's right, the team that was mad enough. <laughs> Only an American team would pick up a sewer mermaid, a dirty cheeser, a delicious freak, and a fantastic content creator, Florencio, for their team. And I love to see it. Upper in the top left, he's on Stargazers. He's up against Kai's. In the, I always think, that, think of this as the reversal matchup, right? Because Florencio was originally a Protoss player. He's been playing a lot more Zerg and Terran recently and really enjoying foraying into all different sorts of things. But uh, we are going to see him up against a Protoss. Okay, it's 100% a reversal. He's getting cannon rushed by a Protoss player as well, getting a taste of his own medicine. Supply blocked on 14. Florencio is going for a 14 hatchery at 450 minerals. This is what I call a crisp opening, guys. And when I say crisp, I mean soggy and inefficient. <laughs> this is such an awkward opening for Flo. Now, he's being blocked, so he goes to take the third base. And he's going to go three hatch before pool, but on almost no drones. This is such an inefficient opening. <laughs> and he's going to get cannoned as well. Luckily for him, the Rotus player doesn't have the biggest economy. He's going to stop at 18 workers for now. It looks like, oh, the classic Florencio moves, sneaking a second probe in for the cannon rush. Now, Flo already bringing two drones down to attack this probe. So I think the probe, the way this one's moved, has made him a little suspicious. But he doesn't see it. Flo, what are you doing, mate? Oh, no, I think he's looking for proxies. I think he thinks he's being proxy gated because he's not looking for cannons right now. He's actually, wait, 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 what? Is he, just, is he just taking every base? He's sending a drone to the gold, and I think he's taking five base. This is actually perfect because he's already planning to take so many bases. You can't cannon them all. And unless Kai squeezes a Nexus in or gets some sort of ground-based follow-up, some gateways, there's going to be a problem now. Florencio still has no idea. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, he scouted that pylon when he went past with his drone. Okay, so he's aware of it now. He sees this cannon as well. And look, he's, he's going to wait to the last second. We're watching from Flo's camera. So you can see what he's focusing on. He's like, oh, did you just let those cannons finish? Our drones are just cancels right. the hatch, takes a gold base. He's like, oh, you're going to... Mm. Okay, he might let the one on his natural finish just because he wants them to build the cannons. But he's like, ah, let's cancel it, save it. He doesn't save the other drone there. He takes hatchery in the corner. So he cancels two hatcheries, takes two more. And now he's going to build a spine crawler in the main. I don't really know the purpose of the spine crawler since uh, a cannon can't walk into your base. But it is what it is. I guess he moves a queen and then spreads creep down here and tries to defend with that. Behind it, Kai is, has got perhaps... <laughs> the most bizarre wall I've ever seen. The cannon is in the front and the gateway is in the back. I think Kai's getting their uh, their building placement a little bit confused there. Is taking a gas geyser behind it as well. Definitely, if Kai's just chronos probes, I still think this is a lead because these bases are in such awkward positions. And at any point later on, Kai's can get warp gate warp in adapts here and really ruin Florencio's plan. The problem is, Kai's has a misread. Kai's thinks, oh, Florencio's going to try and expand there, but he's on one base. So Kai's is going to maybe be paranoid about like one base aggression off the double gas, but Florencio's like, nah, you know what? I'm just going to stay on minerals. I'm just going to actually play economy because you're going to be worried about a Nidus worm or something like that, and that's not even what I'm going for. Cybercore does go down for Kai's. I still think this is a pretty awkward situation for Flo. Macroing off these bases, it seems good to have bases up, but like he's going to have to run drones over there, and that means the cannons would spot them transferring. So Florencio doesn't want to transfer drones because it'll give away what he's up to. He's now mining a bit of gas, four workers on gas. He's going to go for queens down here on these bases so he can try to get the injects and just get them to drone up their own mineral lines. Behind it, a zealot is on the way. Kai's is chronoing probes a little bit, but uh, definitely not quite the hefty probe advantage you might expect after cannon rushing two bases of your opponent. And once those queens start injecting, it's going to be an issue. Now, Sporkrill is coming up. A little bit early uh, since he saw that the Cybercore literally just finished, but Florencio, uh, of course, just dotting his I's, crossing his T's. Uh, for those who don't know, in sewer science school, they actually teach you to dot the I three times. So it has a dot, 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 but going upwards above the I. The T has two crosses across it as well. Um, so so it becomes basically just like a little, a little hashtag almost. Uh, Stargate does go down now for Kai's as well. It's going to transfer into three gates and a Stargate. Is that a full wall off as well? I think it is. So Kai's is full walling, which I guess if Kai's is planning to just take this as the third is totally fine. And Florencio finally getting that gold income up. That's going to allow him to take the worker uh, or income lead in the near future. There we go. Stork is going to take out the Overlord. Link speed's on the way. For those who don't know, Florencio's macro with Zerg is a thing of pure art and beauty. I mean, this man... 
We've seen him with Protoss making Stargate units float thousands of resources before. You give him three hatcheries in all sorts of random positions on the map to inject and produce out of. And I mean, I, I've got to study the control groups. We've got two hatcheries on the bottom on a control group and then the other hatchery on a separate control group. That's actually clever because you don't want to rally them to the same thing or anything like that. So he, he can kind of bounce around that way and try to make something of it. Rotorin is now coming in as well. He's finishing that up. He's also getting ready to take his inside base, as is Kai. As Kai's going for a plus one ground upgrade, building a few Adepts, Zealots, Stalkers, and Sentries. Kai's going for the one of everything build and going for a very delayed Oracle at the same time. So I think Kai's is just going to go up to a big macro game now, killing the cannon in the wall. Be funny if Florencio burrows Roaches in here at some point later in this game. Definitely would be missing the cannon if that's the case. Six Roaches and Link Speed on the way. Flo probably just going to clean these cannons up and move out from there. He's actually got a pretty massive income lead now that these bases are saturating. The power of the hidden base. Florencio is not too great at building his economy and defending at the same time, but if he hides the bases and gets away with it, we know that he is a very fierce monster. Nexus goes up there. Now there's a spore and two queens. The oracles shouldn't be able to do too much, but it could catch a few of these drones long distance mining. Six ravages morphing. Six times uh, six, 360 damage. So that means he can one-shot these cannons with Corrosive Bile if he chooses to. And behind it, we've got the Oracles just starting to stack up. Let's let's see how Kai's does this. All right, here we go. Revenge of the Laser Boy. If he old positions it above the gas, he could do stuff, but nope, you're in range of the Spork Roller there. Get out, get out, get out, bro. Oh, two drones and just throws the Oracle away. Part of the reason why a delayed oracle is not that good is uh, your opponent almost always has spores up in time. Ravages do take out these cannons. He's going to start to defend his base. Let's see if Kai's does any better. Oh, Kai's is just rallying into the base. Uh, that's actually a good position. If he turns on the laser and holds position there, he is out of range. Right now, you guys are seeing the reaction speed of two literal pro gamers here. Absolutely blitzing fast. The F1 driver equivalent in StarCraft, Florencio and his opponent Kai's. You can see the reactions are just blitzing fast. Grabs a drone, takes it out. He's going to move down to the south. Ravages pick it off a pylon as oh well. The Phil squad. Oh, the Oracles could actually laser them. Pick off a few Ravages would not be a bad pick off at all. I like that Kai's still thinks it's two base. Kai's is like, I'm on three base, you're on two. I'm winning. <laughs> oh, if only Kai's knew. There's 18 more drones popping out. Florencio is going to get up to about 60 workers. And behind this, we have mass stalkers with plus two attacks. So Kai's doing the classic uh, Protoss, ladder Protoss thing. For those who don't know, what, what is a ladder Protoss thing? Most players who play Protoss on the ladder, I find they see pro gamers play Blink Stalkers and they're like, those units must be good. Forgetting the fact that the Blink Stalker is pretty much the worst stats for cost unit in the entire game. The reason it's so expensive is it shoots up and shoots down, has good range, has decent maneuverability, and you add Blink and it has amazing maneuverability and becomes one of the greatest units in the game if it's microed by someone who can utilize it. Which means if you're hero, if you're parting, and you can kind of get some value out of it as other pro gamers, but it's always questionable when an average ladder Joe decides to mass stalkers because their stats suck. So in a fight where normally most players are just attack moving, they really don't pay for themselves. Florencio losing a few ravages here. Nice oracles. They get one, two, and they actually left the other oracle alive on the other side. He's going to go after these drones though. Uh-oh. Going to get a bit of a laser party here. Could easily take these spores down while they're building as well. Just click on those spores and you will take him out. There we go. But, oh, running away a little bit. There we go. Gets another spore crawler and we'll just back away. Behind this, fourth base is on the way. I think stalkers aren't the worst thing in the world if you back them up with like Colossus and Disruptors and Storm and all that splash damage stuff. Like they're a decent general support unit. But if you're relying on them for your raw damage, you can end up in big trouble. And right now, I think Kai's is doing it for a good reason. I'm four base. You're barely on two, two bases. If even like this third is just coming up. If I make a generic unit that covers all my bases, like Stalkers, I should win. But that's because Kai doesn't know that Florencio's now even taken the bottom left quarter. He's taken three hidden expansions. And, and Kai's, Kai's is like, wait, you don't even have drones on your natural. So Kai's is under the illusion that they are so far ahead in this game. He's like, all right, just mass gateways, keep building your models and Stalkers. There is no way to lose this game. We can see the economy is actually very similar between both players. Let's, let's bring up that income tab in the top left you can see yeah it's pretty darn close no splash damage on the way is always a problem against roach hydra roach hydra is very friendly for attack moving players roach is cheap and tanky hydra is big damage good range and everything oh the oracles fly in and one of them dies 
really thought a few more were going to go down, but they are all heavily bruised now as well. Seeing the Master Roach Hydra army there, I wonder if it's starting to dawn on Kai's that there might be something else going on in this game. In general, when your opponent's doing stuff that doesn't add up, guys, you always go and scout the map. This is one of those instincts. If your opponent's very cheeky, very cheesy, does weird stuff, or if the game just doesn't make sense, you always just grab a probe, cue it around the edge of the map. You know, it, it doesn't cost you anything. It's a single action, a single worker going for a scout. It, it, it really is something that you've got to build as an instinct. And until you get to, like, GM, a lot of players just don't do it. And honestly, I was doing my hidden base challenge. I was taking corner bases the other week. And I was surprised by how many games the corner base never got found. Because I was like, does this, like, isn't it obvious? Doesn't this add up? Like, what the hell, guys? There are other games where people got onto it straight away. Obviously, we're really like, hey, this game doesn't add up. They quickly go and check the corner. But there were other times where it was like a 25 minute game and I'd completely mine out one or two corner bases without the opponents finding them. Now Florencio is going infestors with pathogen glands and a hive, but he doesn't have a lurker den. Remember, he doesn't go evo chamber upgrades even though he's got two hydra dens. Uh, that's interesting. Second forge on the way. Still no splash damage though and just adding charge. I, I'm always amazed at how slow ladder protoss players are to add splash damage to their armies when like I always feel like just rushing splash damage is almost like a no-brainer, right? Whether it be a few Colossus, a bit of Psy Storm, but only now do we see Robo Bay and Templar Archives. And I get it, it's the misconception. It's that, well, you have so little economy, I, I don't need to tech up. I should be able to just outgun you, but look how many Hydras that is! 38 Hydras! You had Fungal, which will ruin Stalkers. If you can get up like three Robo Disruptor, and indeed there's two Robos and a Robo Bay, that ruins this army. But Flo, going Spire, maybe he goes Broodlords here. He's building three Macro Hatcheries. Florencio realizing I'm not the best macro player, the best mechanical player. Let's make sure we, we, we give ourselves some extra production, a bit of insurance. He doesn't have the biggest work account either, but uh, I think it's enough for him to build a good army, but he's maxing on Hydras. I, I can't get behind this choice. Florencio normally likes to counter his opponent and Zerg naturally often ends up needing to just build units, right? Especially once you go into a macro game in general, you need some sort of core units you can rely on. And, Hydras aren't bad if you trade early enough, but if we let Storm and the Colossus and everything else get in, that's going to be a problem. The Colossus are supply blocked right now. That's huge. He might be able to crush this army. If he can get a good angle, some good fungals. Florencio is up 15 army supply. He fungals and misses everything. The first fungal landed halfway between the Zealots and the Stalkers. Absolutely great. <laughs> oh no, and now he's shoving into a choke point. Florencio. No concave management here. He does land a nice fungal, but all he needs to do is spread his units out in an arc. But I don't know I don't know if I've ever seen Florencio spread units in a, in a firing arc before. He does do a nice hold position, gets the Nexus and some pros, but he's out of fungal now, and his infest is gonna derp into the front. If you can just have more units spread out in a big firing line and your opponents clumped up behind each other, you do have very nice firing superiority. One mutalisk, one neuroparasite, one hydralisk in production. That is the most Florencio production tab I have ever seen. Also, what is that? Kai's has walled off the bottom with shield batteries, the weakest structure in the game. That is a wall that roaches and hydras can breathe on and it'll crumble. Um, Storm and Colossus are coming out, though. The first two Colossus are here and they're going to destroy hydras. Florencio, oh no, he's lost all of his festers, so he can't use Neural on them. I mean, as I said, he's going to take out that battery wall very easily, but oh man, that fungal could be good. He could throw a nice one. He's got to run. Get out of there, Florencio. Those Colossus are roasting and toasting. Oh no, he's attacking into a choke point. It doesn't matter how good the fungal is. If he had lurkers, he would destroy this army, but just Hydras. Oh, Florencio. He steps into the meat grinder. Oh no, he loses his entire army. The units lost have terrible fam. And Kai still has three bases, four bases up in mining. Doesn't care about losing that one Nexus from before. He's going to take out this base and find it. Florencio is trying to swap into Mutaling. 22 Muters on the way. He cancels all the units in the bottom right so as to not reveal his hand. The Sewer Man always thinking about hiding his dirty next step. Hydra there and a single Muter is doing damage. Unfortunately, he accidentally built one Muter and clicked it in here. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that was a misclick for Flo. He's going to try and move across the map now with the Muters and the Lings and go for a bit of a base trade. I think that's a wise choice. Stalkers are not the best at dealing with it. They're okay. There's not a lot of cannon battery. If there was cannons and batteries everywhere, this would be really hard. As it is, though, the Muters are going to fly on in. That is going to be very difficult for Kai's to deal with. The Lings could join up. Oh, nice recall, actually. Dude, that might be a sick recall. If he just blinks on top of these Muters. Oh, Muters are stopping a fight. Florencio, there's no way. There's way too many Stalkers there, dude. He's already lost four Muters. A lot of them heavily damaged here as well. 
But Kai's needs to split these stalkers up between the bases and make sure he covers his worker lines because Flo's getting epic, epic worker damage. He's already brought up to 41 probes killed this game. Those muters, a few of them do start to fall, but he's going to get another worker line. Kai's, the Colossus roasting the Zergling stalkers coming back. He's going to clean up these muters, but can Kai split the army? We've seen that both players are not using army control groups. This is... This is that level of play, guys. We're talking world champion hero caliber play right now because he can run around with these muters and just abuse their mobility like no tomorrow. Cannons try to start. Cannons get clicked down. A couple of probes go down as well. Man, this is big damage. Guys, you got to blink on that, buddy. Does take out a few muters, but that also, because he blinks all of his stalkers in one spot, the muters are like, oh, so this base is open now. The whole army moves up here as well. Florencio showcasing that dirty, dirty boy Mutalist Grass. Still no control group for the muters, which is amazing to me. The thought of microing muters through someone's base without a control group is insane because this is going to happen. Your lings are going to just run into the meat grinder while you're microing the muters. But oh my god, is he butchering the economy. Does it matter though? There's 3-1 upgrades. He can butcher the economy all he wants. Florencio is dead in this game because like, the thing is he can never kill the army. He's not going to kill all these buildings in time. I mean, you could even leave just like 10, 12 stalkers with a shield battery, and I don't think that's killable. I guess base trade is the one victory condition he can go for. He's going to go for the cyber core to stop stalker warpins. Not a bad call. Observer is being built as well by Kai's to make sure Burrow isn't annoying in this base trade. Kai's gets some probes out and, and runs to the other side of the map. They can make sure they can win the base trade. As it is, Recall will be ready again soon enough. Kai's runs in and kills this base. Doesn't know about the bottom left. Mass spine crawler building everywhere the stalkers could just blink on that and kill it but kai's is not microing and everything's stuck behind each other oh my god just blink forward and kill them you could like one shot these spines loses like six stalkers there he's still at 170 army supply all kai's needs to do is send half the army home and keep killing with the other half the army this is such a gigantic protoss force 170 supply of well upgraded protoss units stalkers archons colossus versus a handful of muters with zero zero i mean there's just no way Florencio did some tricky builds, got away with three hidden bases, but at the end of the day, looks like Macro is going to beat Micro in this one. Kai's did open up with the cannon rush as well, so a nice disruptive strategy into this big Macro play, and it looks like Florencio is going to try and fly home? Maybe pick off some units? That's I, I think he needs to commit harder to the base trade, but there's Archons, batteries, a cannon, and a High Templar with Storm down there, so that's untakeable. You can't take that out with the muters. Oh, he's going to lose all of his Overlords as well! Oh, which means any rebuild is going to be severely hurt. Oh, no. Florencio, look at that. He was at 200, yeah, 200 possible supply. And it's going to drop down to about 100 once all these are dead. Maybe actually even lower. Like maybe 80. Oh, leaving a few stalkers to finish those off. Florencio is going to come back and try to finish these buildings, being a little indecisive. He's got a lot of tentacles there. Let's see if the stalkers blink on this, they could take it out. Or if he just lets the immortal Colossus. The Colossus can clear it up for free. He's already lost one arc on. He, he loses another Stalker, another Stalker, so it's two Stalkers, maybe three or four Stalkers, and the Archon will go down here. Oh, actually, another Archon's going to fall if he doesn't blink forward again. And it goes down, another Archon goes down. Kai's being rather inefficient here. But as long as Kai sends a few more units, maybe we good. But Kai's F2s! No, Kai's! This base was unbreakable. You're going to win the base trade if you leave those units there. Oh my, and Kai's just F2s the entire army. Uh, but wait, wait, sorry guys, not F2. Presses select all army, goes control one, and then says, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm using my army hotkey. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? That drone gets caught. Um, this drone also runs from the... Okay, so Florencio knows he's got a hide, so he's got one drone he's sneaking out and a hatchery here. He's realizing now it is, it is a full base trade. That Protoss army is still 160 supply. He's going to run a drone into the Protoss base, is, and he's going to try and take a hatchery up here, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to try and build a hatchery there. Oh, the spine crawlers kill another stalker and an archon. Kai's, you know your Colossus outrange spines. You can just A move it with Colossus for free. Kai's. Oh my god. Kai's micro is, is next level. Another archon goes down. And another stalker goes down. My lord. That is, um, it's impressive how much I normally spines kill almost nothing at high level. <laughs> They're actually doing a lot. This is this is fun. The muters right now are like, uh, sir, um, we we have a, a grenade and a, a biplane, a, a couple of biplanes with grenades, and um, and and they have literal literal Battlestar Galacticas, man. They have uh, they, they they have everything, dude. I guess they don't have carriers, no Battlestar Galacticas. But uh, anyways, the muters take out the cannons. One or two of them die. It's only twenty three muters. They can die to like half of this army. 15 Stalkers and a, and a High Templar with Storm and they're dead. They get the Nexus though. 
Okay, he's got enough money to rebuild though. So Kai's can easy rebuild that Nexus. Just let's see if Kai's can figure out how to box the army, put it there, and then control the rest with the other half. Nope. 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 Still still struggling with that mechanic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Florencio. You know what's crazy? This game's all been about hidden bases. And Florencio is completely dead. Like it doesn't he can buy time, but like he should never kill this. The Protoss is splitting the units up! But for some reason he's left all the anti-ground units here. And only three Archons, which arguably three Archons could die to 22 meters. It'd be hard, but it's kind of funny that he's, he's doing it this way. The probe should clearly stay there and build a Nexus as well and start mining, right? But he does catch a few more muters. Two of them go down. <laughs> Florencio is hiding a base here as well. Okay, so, so Florencio has realized in this base trade, it's only a matter of time till Kai's comes down and finds this base. But because Kai's didn't notice this hatchery go fast, there's no reason why Kai's would go back into his own main and natural. Because he was in the base trade, he didn't notice the drone walk in. This is actually the dumbest, dirtiest trick ever that Florencio has done. <laughs> and Kai's doesn't know about it. And as long as he doesn't lure his army all the way over there to see the creep spread, there's no reason Kai's will ever notice that hatchery. So Flo with one drone there, with 11 drones here, a sporting pool there and a hatchery there, is just going to try and distract for the next 10 minutes with these muters while he slowly <laughs> rebuilds. <laughs> At any moment, Kai's could just, like we said, leave some army and split up. Just leave a few Stalkers and the three Archons there, defending this Nexus. And the other half of the army just go around killing the bases. But Kai's, much like a kitten that has a, a red laser a laser light shot on the wall in front of it, is just like pouring at the Mutalisks. The Muta's just flying around in a circle, luring him. Kai's is not going to be able to build more probes. It's just five probes mining. So Kai's can't actually build more probes until they mine enough to build about uh, 15, like 14 pylons, something like that. I'm not good with numbers. Uh, 14 times eight, I think. Yeah, about about the right number, something like that. Stalkers are here. The muters seeing if they can fight. They definitely can't fight against that, but maybe they can just pick off buildings on the edges, which doing a decent job of. It's getting damage. Maybe catch a high Templar. Storm does wound them. And Kai's, oh, if he just blinks on that, he can kill a lot of these. The muters come in. The stalkers don't blink though, Kai's struggling with the multiple spellcaster selection there. And Florencio is droning. He's droning! He's back up to 20 workers! The advantage in this scenario, and because he got some overlords away to the bottom left, not a lot, but some, is because he has so few units, he can rebuild drones without having to build 50 overlords. Kai's on the other hand has to save money to build 50 pylons. Which is why, with 145 army supply, you should just win. Even if you just send all the Zealots and Colossus A moving around the map, you're going to find the bases. But Kai's problem-solving hat is absolutely not on. Kai's is just sitting there going, I guess I just rebuild. But Kai's has not figured out that when you're this supply blocked, rebuilding is not a thing. If they're rebuilding and mining at all anywhere on this map, they're going to be doing it faster than you. Because you're just stuck. You're gridlocked on five probes. Queuing up four probes. Oh no, Kai still doesn't realize the supply block, right? Okay, there we go. Clears the queue and starts a pile on. But that's 120 supply block, mate. You're going to need a lot of pylons to get past that. <laughs> so dumb. Stalkers can blink on this. I still feel like Florencio's muter micro. He leaves two muters behind. He gets a probe, flies away. The stalkers do not blink on him to punish. There we go. They get a mutalisk. But losing a probe is massive. Florencio is still just building overlords, building drones uh, wherever he can. His muter's flying around. Kai's right now. Let's go to Kai's camera and try to get inside the head of this Protoss player, guys. Because I, I, they've queued up and they built one pylon, they've selected the Nexus, and they queued up four probes again. Kai's has still not figured out how the supply block works. <laughs> oh man, two muters go down. They get a probe though. That means there's only two probes. If those probes die, then you're screwed. I mean, why don't these other stalkers just run up on the high ground? He could easily catch all these muters. The muters are trying to stack up to take a fight. He gets a probe. He waits for the probe to come in. Gets it. Gets out. Oh, he does lose another muter list though. Guys, why don't you just go up there with your stalkers? What? Guys goes up there and throws a stalker away. What is happening in this game? And guys are like, I'm winning, right? I'm building two more pylons. I think that'll unsupply block me. Let's try and queue probes again. Oh my god, what are you doing? What are you doing? Florencio's got a lair and a spire rebuilding right now, guys. So he's making two lairs in case one of them dies and a spire. And he's looking for the very last probe. If that guy dies, he knows there's no rebuilding for Kai's. Now, he probably shouldn't do that because that might prompt Kai's to actually be smart enough to use his units. Kai's only leaves four Stalkers and I Templar here, though. No, no, no. You, you can't just leave four Stalkers. What are you doing? What? The Muters are going to come and he trades one Muter, but he's going to kill the High Templar and all four Stalkers and the last probe. 
And then Kai's panic F that pulls these stalkers home. What? Why are these guys not defending together? He's trying to defend his infrastructure on the right side, but his infrastructure is worthless. Kai's is going back to the main base, but still not checking his corners. In this game, Florencio peeking his head out of the sewers, going oogie boogie. Finally, Kai's goes and finds one of the bases, but that's only one of them. And you can tell that Kai's is just not thinking about what's out there. Kai's is so panicked, so adrenaline riddled, so unable to think straight in this scenario. Does at least focus the Spire down. But I think Kai's is like, cool, I found your last base, I win. No! No, 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 no. You, you need to go hunt. You can't just sit here all game, Kai's. Meanwhile, Florencio's making Hydras. Which makes no sense. I mean, I guess they do okay versus the Stalkers if the Colossus are all sitting at home. Which I'm still wondering why all the units that don't shoot up are sitting at home. you think they'd be out there hunting the map and scouring it, right? To, to see if you can find your opponent's economy. And the Zealots especially are super expendable. Imagine if they just queued around the map. The Muters would take forever to kill them. These are, these are plus one armor Zealots. And uh, he won't even see you leave the base because there's so little vision. But Kai's right now showing the problem-solving uh, solutions of a geriatric donkey is derping back and forwards and just hugging the Nexus. The thing is, this Stalker count, that's only 13 Stalkers. There's three Archons, 25 Stalkers, and a High Templar. But having thrown away so many Stalkers in this base trade, that's enough that could get overwhelmed by the Hydras and the Mutas. The Hydras and the Mutas could trap these Stalkers, kill them, and then he's low on anti- Why is he sending- He's still leaving all of his anti-ground units there. These, these guys are going to get cornered. Yes, he's finding more bases. He will ruin Florencio's economy. And I mean, he could even lose these and still potentially win the game. But the Mutas and Hydras, these Stalkers, oh god, oh god, he could he could try to recall. He's going to blink on top. I, I don't know about that one, mate. He does take out the Hydras. I mean, the better upgrades definitely do show their merit, but he's going to lose all of those Stalkers, which is a big disaster for him. Florencio starting to F2, which reveals the base. Florencio is accidentally revealing the base because he started stepping to chase the Mutas and he shows Hydras rallying out. Kai's, Kai's might be so distracted he doesn't realize. Like, where'd those Hydras come from? The base that's been hiding behind your base this entire time, mate. The Stalkers trying to run away. The Muters chasing after them. Get to the Archons. The Archons can smash those Muters. But he's down to just seven Stalkers. He's managed to lose 18 Stalkers in that skirmish. And now he's going to move out there. But the Stalkers here trying to move back to deal with that Muter. The Hydras go down. The Muters go down. A few more Hydras fall. These buildings go down. There's only one. Okay, there's a drone out and that hidden base. Come on, guys. You've seen so many units rallying out from your base. You gotta wonder where they came from. Personally, I'm just I'm just saying, guys, if, if someone steps out of the pantry in my house and says, hey buddy, and then just walks out the front door, I'm gonna go look in the pantry to find where their camping setup is and why they've been living in my house secretly. Florencio catches all of the stalkers there. He's gonna clean up the Colossus. The Zealots will chase down these Hydras, but they're just leading this army on a merry chase. He actually found the drone down here. There's no more drones. All Kai's needs to do is go and A-move that. But Kai's doesn't seem to have noticed. Kai's is so confused. And Kai's ability to split the army up is not there. Kai's still has 67 army supply, three Archons, more than a match for these muters, but has not figured out that there is a base behind the base, even though units have been coming from inside. The call has been coming from inside the house. The army has been rallying out from inside your own base. Kai's, please! <laughs> oh my god. It's stupid. <laughs> this game is so dumb. From 170 army supply verse 50 to 67 verse 20. Kai's showing truly how to get befuddled in a game of StarCraft. This, this is like hiding bases taken to a truly torturous art form. None of these units shoot up. The High Templar's in the open, unguarded. Oh no, Florencio might find the High Templar. Kai's! I'm cheering for Kai's here. The Sewer Mermaid's already been twisting this man's nipples right off. And I, I feel like we're, we're, we're in severe danger of areola detachment at this point. Um, Kai's is in big trouble. Storm, not bad. Tickles him. But I love, there's an observer as well. Like if Kai's just sends the observer up, Kai's has just checked every base on the left side of the map. The Zealots are making their way back down the bottom, but Panic F2s them back to the front. Kai's has three control groups that are all overlapping, showing you that Kai's is severely confused. And Kai's is now queuing these bottom bases because he's like, well, it has to be here. I've checked every base. Kai's, if you kill that base, you win the game. <gasps> but Flo, wait, wait, he's realized. But he's realized too late. Florencio has already broken out. So even if he finds the base now, which he's going to do it, Florencio opens the door just in time, realizing that this might happen. And he's going to get out with all the drones. 
And there was no way out until 20 seconds ago when Florencio finally opens the door, gets the drones out. The Archons are going to come over. The Muters are trying to deal with these units. The Muters should go for the buildings. They shouldn't go for the army. They should go for the buildings. Florencio needs to rebuild. He's going to start a hatchery there. He still has so few buildings. That's that's all the money he's got for. That's his last hatchery. He's going to storm his own units, but of course, does at least scare the Muters away. Takes out all these buildings. Now Kai's <laughs> down to... He's, he's kept his army alive. He's got three Archons. The High Templar's out of energy, though. So no more storms. Just three Archons versus these uh, 15 muters now. Really good micro. He could pick off an Archon, but it's scary. The Archon splash is really big, man. On those mutalisks. And he, he leaves? He just leaves! He's like, whoa! This is BS, man! How do you just have so many bases? You still... If you go across and catch these, he could hide a few extractors. That's the best he could do. <laughs> it's still, I mean, it's still hard to win from here. But <laughs> what an amazing move. And and that was it, guys. Florencio gets the victory there. He stays in the game, of course, picking off these units like the savage he is. But this base was hidden in the back of his base for about 10 minutes. Hydra's rallied out two or three times. The guys was too stressed to notice. It's <laughs> so stupid. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. And a special thanks to our Patreons, especially Jacob G and Maxan up there the Leviathan and the conductor of the Detail Express, as well as everyone else who's been supporting the Patreon. Thank you so much. If you guys do want to check it out, links below in the description and we appreciate the support. For now, if you want to watch more StarCraft silliness, check out some of these games on screen and we'll see you in the next episode, everybody. Goodbye and good night.